speech now, but there are a few things that I want to break it down uh, for you first before we have the conversation. As you know, the latest on this today, um, I'm talking about the Achimoto Forest Land Saga, is that Corruption Watch has petitioned the uh, special prosecutor, and they want them, the special prosecutor, to do something very specific. Uh, investigate the alleged state lands belonging to the late Kodosu Freer. You know him properly as Sir John. And this is the matter uh, relating to his will, um, you know, alleged will, which has been circulating uh, for a while now since Sunday evening. The Corruption Watch, under the auspices of CDD, wants that investigator because we've seen um, a, a few things in there that has raised a few eyebrows. Now, according to the... Um, the Corruption Watch, it is an offense for a person to use public office for personal profit. Now, the reason why this is important is, you know, Sir John, when he was alive, he's now late, of course, uh, was a CEO of the Forestry Commission. And then you see in his will, we'll go to some of the things that were found in his will that has triggered this petition very shortly. But then you see in his will, um, him willing off parts of the forest, Achimota Forest, to, to people who are close to him or relatives or family, um, Corruption Watch says that is an offence for if indeed it's established, if indeed it's established, all this as at this point is not proving. Nothing is proving. Um, everything else that we've heard are allegations subject to investigations uh, either by the special prosecutor. The will itself is a subject of contestation in court. And so a lot of this is um, uh, yet to be proven, by the way. But the point that uh, Corruption Watch is making that if it is proving, then it's definitely going to be an offense for a person to use public office for personal profit. And they also believe that the late Sir John abuses public office and dishonestly used it for his private benefit if, again, uh, it is established, right? So that's the basis for the petition that they put before the, the, the special prosecutor. They're also asking that um, the SP, the special prosecutor, establish how the state lands, including the several acres of land situated at the Achimota Forest and Ramsar sites in Sakumono were secured by the late Sir John. Uh, again, this is an issue that a special prosecutor will have to look at. I, I checked with the special prosecutor's office. Um, they believe it's something that they would be uh, dealing with pretty shortly in terms of looking at it, the petition, and they'll have to respond um, to the petition. So we'll get to know a bit of that pretty shortly. So what really is in the purported will and that has become such a huge amount of controversy? You see in the will a few things that we want to focus on. This is just to do with the relevant issues surrounding the Achimota Forest and the Ramsar sites. Um, in that will, it says, I gave my land situated at the Achimota Forest, and that is a key point here, at the Achimota Forest in the name of and a list of individuals who should go. Um, who will get it, but also the names in which the lands are registered, okay? So you will find that Kojo Usifri's name, it's, it's, the, the name is not on, on the document, it's not on the will in terms of the ownership of the land, but it says, Jackie Pro Limited um, owns 5.41 acres there. The key question to ask is, if the will is proven to be authentic, etc. I mean, but the man is willing it off to people, Right? If he doesn't own it, how is he able to will it? Right? And one of the things that the Corruption Watch is asking the SP to do is to remove the veil, is to go down to beneficial owners. So who are the beneficial owners when it comes to this particular 5.41 acres? Yes, it's the name of the company, but we have to uh, pierce this veil, is what they're asking for. Um, the FASO, uh, FASO Limited, it's 0 0.987 acres. Uh, and then he, he also has land jointly, he owns jointly with Charles Owusu, uh, one piece of land, um, all in the Archimoto Forest. And then DML Limited, again, joint ownership. Um, the acreage is not disclosed, right? So that is what um, the special prosecutor is supposed to look into. And then we have the Ramsar site. Of course, this is an ecologically very sensitive site and protected for reasons of ecology and protecting the balance as far as the environment is concerned. And again, the will, um, Sir John Lee Spepola to have said, and it's in the will, the will has a subject of contestation. I give my land situated at the Ramsar area at Sakumono 
in the Greater Accra region and measuring 5.07 acres to my sisters. Again, we've seen when he was alive himself, he was against um, the Ramsar site being developed uh, by those who have bought lands there. And so that definitely raises serious questions of conflict of interest, et cetera, um, if indeed it is proven, right? So we've seen things this happen, um, swift response by the sector minister who had been on top of this from day one, um, briefing the, the public and providing clarity on a few issues, but also taking decisive action on a few other things. Now, the ministry you know, issued a statement um, that clarified a few things. The one, they had no record of ownership of lands at the Achimota Forest in Ramsar, but also in the name of Kojo Usufriye. But that is, that, is, um, that, that is understandable because, of course, one, as you see, this, the lands themselves were not in the name of Kojo Usufriye. But secondly, because that place was not degazetted, at the time that I believe um, and then this, again, is subject to uh, verification by the SP and others, um, had not been degazetted. It was still a forest reserve. The Lands Commission would not register land there because it was a forest reserve. And so you would, you would possibly hold an indenture by you who had a title, right? And so that's why if you check with the Lands Commission, uh, you will not find a registration there. And this is indeed a factual matter that the minister put in this document. Directive also was issued then uh, to the Lands and Forestry Commission to deem any ownership of the lands, both uh, in the Achimota Forest and the Sakumono Ramsar site, by the late Kojo Usufriye void. And that was the first decisive decision that the sector minister took, saying you, you can't have it, it's void. Even if you did, you can't have it, it's void. Um, so that's a decisive decision uh, by the minister as far as this is concerned. Now, what we wanted to do for you when it comes to the acreage, remember that this all started because of the conversation around the original owners. They were called the Owu family. And what I find interesting is that the Owu family had petitioned almost every government in our republic for a very long time. And they petitioned almost every minister to in the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry. And all the governments since John Kufo had agreed with the Owu family that they were entitled to um, part of the part of the forest that had been degraded and called the peripheral areas okay so we said let's track for you because the acreage that each of the administrations had awarded to the old family had varied had changed over time so we give you we give you one snapshot of the journey of the acreage which is at the heart of this matter as well and something very interesting will begin to emerge and so when you look at this I may just expand it a bit more, right? You will find that in this started in 2007, okay, and then into 2008 there was a, an agreement that was signed, where the John Kufu administration under the sector minister had an agreement with the old family to give out 90, um, 90 acres to them, right? And then you come to before this could be executed. The government changed hands after 2020, uh, 2008 elections. Then the John Mills administration then sets up a committee. They came to the same conclusion that the old family were entitled to some compensation and they were going to do so with the land. Then they said, this is the Afraid Data Committee. Afraid Data Committee then agrees that instead of 90, the old family deserved more. Right, and so they gave 180, and they. The reason for this is on compassionate grounds, right? So they gave them, and they found that their position, their old family position on the matter, was justified. So they gave them 118. So this is a jump from 90 to 118, right? And then, after that, and we found, you know, documents that that make this that backs this claim that it was 90 in Nakufor. And then 118. In fact, the ministry has released some documents um, to back this uh, particular point here. Um, and then in 2013, when they was being executed, there were three different acres that was broken down. Down it became 148 
acres in 2013. In 2014, it then became 198 acres. So you see that it's, it keeps changing. You come to the current president in his first term, the first time they engaged it, they reviewed it again to 329. I'll tell you why very shortly. I'll go through that for you very shortly. And then you come to 2021, it became 355, and then it ends now with the current one that has joined the controversy at 361. So that says the journey is traveled, and you see that it's traveled a fair bit, and each of the governments had come, looked at it, and decides to give it to give more, and incrementally it's, it's gone. Okay, so why is this? Why is this? Now this tells a very interesting story. The Tota Forest area, if you look at the documents going back, and the Forestry Commission has been very transparent in releasing the history, giving us a setting background to this and traveling. And so a lot of documents, it's, it's documents that they, it's in the possession of the ministry, and they've been magnanimous enough to, to let us all read. Um, and they've been updating. Today, there's been further documentation that the ministry and that the current minister had, had done. Um, and, and of course, in the ability to be transparent in this very important matter. We've seen the total acreage being 1,185. That's all, all the way back to the 1920s. And so if you take what is being given to the old family currently, we are talking about some 30% of the forest that has been given, right? So remaining nine green, nine, 90, 69% of that uh, is, is left. And we've seen the ministry show evidence. It took journalists there to show them that we are planting more trees there. And from what I understand, on the 10th of June, there'll be more trees planted there to afforest the place. And some funding has been secured for that to happen in this area here, in the 69% of the, of the forest that is still untouched. And so the reasons for the various increases is important. So first, the, in, on, in, the 20, in, 20, in 2006, when a petition was first sent, register for the release of the encroached land of the Achimoto Forest, then the second petition came in, and if you track to the agreement that was reached for the 90 acres, um, the lease could not be executed, as I've explained, and so it moved to the next government. The first, in 2019, the outcome was government concluded that a request for the release of the portion of the land that is legitimate and reasonable. So that was the first reason under the Mills administration. The committee found that the area the family was requesting was a prime section of the reserve where the forest is richest. Okay, so this is the first reason why there was an increase from 90 to 118. The forest is richest where you, the Kufu administration gave you, this is under Mills. We have found in the new government that it is richest. So we can't give you that anymore. We'll give you something else. But we need to compensate you um, for, for that. So they decided to compensate them. In the decision to compensate them, they led to increasing the, the acreage for them. So that then leads to this. And then you come to, we fast forward to 2013, the same committee. They again looked into it. By the time they were being executed, they broke it down into this. And then they increased it to 148, right? And then you come to 2014, again, there were some variations, okay? And by deed of variation, the Forest Commission granted old family 50 more acres, uh, bringing the total acreage to 198. So that's where we got to the 198. And then you come to 2018, again, done. The commission wrote to the old family, indicating that the portion that they were already got from the previous administration, there were sensitive, you know, installations there the nursery and a seismology. So you can't have it. Although you have it, we, we have to take it back from you. Again, old family raised an objection. You have to compensate that because even the areas you are put, proposing to give us less value. So give us something more to compensate for what we had before. And then that leads to a further increase to 329. Okay. So then you track that to the currently. Then by the time that they actually want to now get the Lands Commission involved, Lands Commission also goes to the site that's its own survey, and realized that what the Forestry Commission all along had been using was not accurate. And so they did the accurate reading and, and, and found a discrepancy between um, 329, and they said the actual acreage in question that they were entitled to, if you do the actual reading, is 355. And so that then leads to a further increase, of course. And then the commission then explained that they, through the analysis and field visit to the forest, reveals that there have been discrepancies in the estimation of the total area 
of the Achimota forest. And of course, then we end up with what we currently have. Um, again, following a field visit and validation, the Lands Commission submitted a validated schedule and site plan that leads to this. So this has traveled a, a, a fair bit across the board. But my guests are joining me for a conversation on this. It's raised so many issues, um, from the Sir John matter to the current issues. The minister obviously has said it's going to be an audit into this. Um, and we understand that the special prosecutor may also be looking into this. There's a whole number of issues that we need to look at. It's asset declaration.